Good afternoon. This is uh, Maeve Quinn, uh, president of the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees, and I am just going to take a look at our special screen to see if we um, have a uh, quorum so that we can start our meeting. So just hold on just a moment, trying to navigate in person and virtual. Um, 2021 style, I guess. Uh, all right, um, it does look with a lovely, whoop. Um, it does look like with a combination of virtual and we're having a little bit of uh, sound issues. Okay, so I'm wondering if those of you who are uh, calling in, if you could just mute yourself because we're getting a little bit of uh, back. Okay, all right. Um, so uh, as I was about to say, it looks like uh, between our in-person uh, members and our virtual members, uh, we do have a quorum. So I'm delighted to say that we can actually start our uh, meeting. We, uh, so at this time, I'd like to call our meeting to order. Uh, we do have a quorum. And at this time, if you could uh, rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, thank you. Um, and I just wanted to also just sort of say that some of you uh, will also be pleased to note that uh, we have our dear friend, Nancy Manchin, uh, uh, joining us today, uh, which is uh, very well-timed, uh, as well as our dear friend Mary Lynn Donahue. They are both here for the beginning part of our meeting so that we can truly give them uh, a moment of uh, honoring their service uh, with a resolution to that effect. Oh, and they're, they're even waving. Terrific. Um, but before we get to that fun part of our uh, agenda, I have some other wonderful news. I would like to introduce all of you to our newest uh, library board of trustee, and that is Andre Walton, and he is actually sitting to uh, my left. And I had asked him to just uh, take a moment to sort of introduce himself and uh, uh, share some of the highlights of why he's delighted to be with all of us. All right. Thanks, Maeve. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to be on the board. So as uh, Maeve said, my name is Andre Walton. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I uh, went to Whitewater, uh, University of Wisconsin Whitewater for college. And uh, a few years after I graduated, I moved to Sheboygan. I uh, was looking for a home base uh, to stay, and uh, this is where I settled. Uh, and pretty quickly, I fell in love with the city. Um, it reminds me of a city I used to live in uh, when I lived in Seattle or in Washington, call it Tacoma, Washington. So not too big of a city, not too small. It's kind of just the right size. So happy to be uh, in a city that kind of fits my characteristics. And um, yeah, for me, being on the board is is a huge way on giving back to the community um, in, in a way that I think would be impactful. Um, I'm always looking for ways to work and be a part of the community. And I think this is a, a great opportunity to do that. So I'm looking forward to you know, learning a lot from what you guys have done and your experiences and looking forward to working with you all and getting to know you in the near future. Well, uh, welcome and I look forward to hopefully uh, this summer that there will be an opportunity for all of us to uh, meet in person safely uh, to get to know each other a little bit more. But uh, thank you for helping us get to our full uh, board uh, table and uh, um, at this time, uh, looking out into the audience, I, for those of you who are unable to tell from your computer screen, uh, we do not have any member of the public here for uh, public comments. So I am going to move then to the next item on the agenda, which is 1.5. And would someone like to uh, make a motion to approve the minutes of May 27th, 2021? And you can signal by holding up your hand if you would like, or say aye. So moved. All right. Happy. 
Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Kathy made a motion. Is there someone who would like to second her motion? I second Sherry. Uh, Sherry's that is seconded. Are there any uh, comments or questions? There being none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next up, under 1.6, uh, correspondence, announcements, and common council reports. Um, I just wanted to share with all of you that um, I will be sharing uh, tomorrow via email uh, a really wonderful opportunity that has been uh, shared by the Monarch Library Systems for all Board of Trustees. There is some really um, incredible training uh, work workshops for Board of Trustee members in the month of August. Uh, there's a different topic each uh, day, and that seems like the webinars tend to be right around the lunch hour. Um, so I will be sending this information out, and you can let me know if you are of interest. And if that is the case, we will sign um, up uh, interested uh, trustees and uh, be ready to uh, learn a little bit more about our roles and how we can be more effective. And then anyone who does attend, perhaps you can enlighten us with your new knowledge uh, at our September meeting. So uh, please take uh, note of that email when it does arrive in your inbox. Um, moving on now to uh, which truly for me is the most fun a uh, component of being president of a library board, in addition to just, uh, you know, uh, recognizing all of the incredible work that our employees, uh, wonderful uh, staff does at Mead Public Library and all the incredible programs that they do, is to take a moment to really thank uh, trustee members who have given their time and talent to uh, Mead Public Library. And today we have two uh, wonderful people uh, that are, um, joining us virtually, and at this time, I am going to um, uh, start with 1.7 uh, in a, a resolution in honor of Mary Lynn Donahue. I am going to read that, and then we will go ahead and uh, uh, take a motion and second it to make that resolution uh, truly official. Uh, but um, just as you can all imagine, just pretend we're all in the same room together, and that we're trying our best to make Mary Lynn smile a lot uh, because uh, she deserves a, a resolution that is longer than one page. But uh, you'll be proud of me, Mary Lynn. I managed to keep it to one page. So you know, I, 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 know that is, <laughs> I know that's always been your preference. So without further ado, a resolution in recognition of the service of Mary Lynn Donahue to Mead Public Library. Whereas Mary Lynn Donahue was first appointed as the City of Sheboygan Common Council liaison to the Library Board by Mayor Mike Vandersteen in April of 2018. Whereas Mary Lynn Donahue participated diligently as the Finance Committee Chairperson, and whereas Mary Lynn Donahue helped guide the library through the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a very unique resolution just with that line alone, I just have to say. And uh, whereas Mary Lynn Donahue was an advocate with Mead Public Library's vision of creating a vibrant, informed, and cohesive community. And Mary Lynn Donahue strived to uphold Mead Public Library's core value of inclusiveness. And whereas Mary Lynn Donahue served as a model for the conduct of the responsibilities of a library trustee in a well-informed and reasoned manner. Whereas Mary Lynn Donahue took seriously her responsibilities as a board member and worked conscientiously for the benefit of the citizens of Sheboygan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Me Me <coughs> excuse me, Mead Public Library Board does hereby publicly commend Mary Lynn Donahue for the time and attention she so generously devoted to her responsibilities as trustee. The board thanks her for her commitment in serving as a Mead Public Library trustee and recognizes her service through the designation of appropriate book titles for the purchase in her honor. Mead Public Library wishes for her all the best following her service to Sheboygan residents as a library trustee. And even though we're not all together, let's all attempt to do a an applause. It's well deserved. Oh, there we go. <laughs> 
Uh, at this time, would someone like to make a motion to adopt this resolution in honor of the service of Mary Lynn Donahue? I'll make a motion. Motion. Uh, motion has been made by Andre Walton. Is there a second? Second. William. William Bolson is seconded. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Thank you, thank you, Mary Lynn Donahue. Is there anything that you would like to share at this time? Well, of course I would, Maeve. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> and my screen is a little jumpy. I, I will keep this very short, except to say that the library has been a key institution in my life and my husband's life and our children. We used to camp out on the second floor uh, among the war books. It's so important to have the uh, Board of Trustees attend to, understand, and appreciate the relationship with the city and to educate the city over and over and over again as to the incredibly important work that the library does uh, for our community. So thank you so much. I've never heard my name said so many times, like in a minute, Maeve. So, um, but... Uh, I do miss you all, and uh, I'll stop in some time when you're all together in person, and we'll just we'll eat one of Maeve's cookies. So thanks again. It's been a true pleasure. Thank, thank you, Mary Lynn. And in uh, tradition uh, on this board, uh, when when you do decide to step down, we feel that you have a little more time in your life. Uh, I, I know that sometimes sounds impossible for you, Mary Lynn, but you do have a little more time. Uh, and because of that, we've got some lovely books uh, that we would just like to let you have as part of just a little bit of time for you to treat yourself to uh, relaxing. And more importantly, I just want to share that, that you are getting this really incredible map. And this map is a Midwest Indie Bookstore Roadmap. And I am pretty sure that Melissa Prentice will clue me in on which public libraries in all of these Midwest cities that you should also visit with Tim. So uh, I think this is a great way once it's safer to travel, you now got a roadmap uh, to enjoy uh, literature wherever you go. So thank you. So, all right, now, um, it's a very rare honor to be able to uh, share our deep gratitude to two people in one meeting. So Nancy Manchin, I'm so delighted that you can join us today too. Um, I do have a resolution in honor of your incredible service. And I'm just gonna get my paper here. So um, as I just had done, I'm going to read the resolution and then we will take the actions to adopt the resolution. So. Here we go. Uh, a resolution in recognition of the service of Nancy Manchin to Maine Public Library. Whereas Nancy Manchin was first appointed to the library board by Mayor Mike Vandersteen in August 2014. And whereas Nancy Manchin participated diligently on the library board's human resources and ad hoc art committees while also representing Mead on the Monarchs Library System Board. And whereas Nancy Ma <clears throat> Nancy Manchin helped guide the library through COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas Nancy Manchin was also an advocate, strong advocate for Mead Public Library's vision of creating a vibrant, informed, and cohesive community. And whereas Mary Nancy Manchin served as a model for the conduct of the responsibilities of a library trustee in a well-informed and reasoned manner, and whereas Nancy Manchin took seriously her responsibilities as a board member and worked conscientiously for the benefit of the citizens of Sheboygan. And now therefore be it resolved that the Mead Public Library does hereby publicly commend Nancy Manchin for the time and commitment she so generously devoted to her responsibilities as a trustee. The board thanks her for her commitment in serving as Mead Public Library trustee and recognizes her service through designation of appropriate book titles for purchase in her honor. The Mead Public Library wishes her all the best following her service to Sheboygan residents as a library trustee. So please join me in a round of applause. 
And at this time, would someone like to make a motion to adopt the resolution in honor of the surface of Nancy Mansion? Sherry, uh, so moved. Sherry Spath made the motion. Would someone like to second? I'll second. All right. Kathy. Kathy Norman has seconded. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion unanimously is passed. And uh, Nancy, uh, thank you so much. Are there any words that you would like to uh, share yeah. with us today? Oh, thanks, May, for um, the kind words. And, you know, in um, the years I spent in, in the uh, classroom, we always in, encouraged the high school students that, um, that we had to to be lifelong learners. And I've really been fortunate in my, my time with, with you on the board to, um, to be a learner myself um, about the significance of this public library in offering free and open access to all, and also um, in being a community catalyst. And I'm, I'm really uh, grateful for that. I also have uh, great confidence that Mead Library will continue in those roles and will can you continue to be, a, one of my all-time favorite phrases, a palace for the people. So thank you. And I, I, I hope to join uh, Mary Lynn for a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> hey. um, I also wanted to share, Nancy, that uh, because all of a sudden I have this belief that you also are going to have a little more time. Um, I also have some uh, books for you to kind of consider with all this time that you uh, <laughs> seem to have. And because I know that you are also one who's interested in travel, you too are getting the same wonderful map of all the <laughs> independent bookstores in uh, the Midwest. And I will, as I said with Mary Lynn, yes. I'm going to be adding advice of which public libraries you should also visit if you decide to take the road less traveled. So uh, so at this time, uh, thank you both to Mary Lynn and Nancy for your incredible years of service and your inspiration and your absolute tenacity for supporting public libraries uh, in our community. So uh, with that, you're welcome to stay for the meeting, but I really think you're mm -hmm. gonna enjoy your treasured time <laughs> with something else today. So thank you, thank you. Okay, um, so at this time, we are now moving ahead to um, the uh, committee reports. And under 2.1, uh, the first one is review and possible action on payment of our current expenditures, including payroll and special uh, revenues, such as grants, gifts, and donations. And at this time, um, uh, uh, Debbie D'Amico has sent us um, the detailed uh, information regarding this um, item on the agenda, but I am going to turn this over to Sherry Speth to see if there's any additional information she would like to share with us at this time. Well, this is my first time, so I feel very uncomfortable doing this because I don't have a financial background. However, I will try and be a good learner. <laughs> and I really appreciate having Deb as a support. Um, so Deb has prepared the check run, and I did not see anything amiss, but that doesn't mean there isn't anything. But I think we're good to go with that. So wonderful. So would you, would you like uh, me to ask for a motion to? Yes. OK. So at this time, would someone like to make a motion for the payment of our current expenditures, including the payroll and special revenues? So, just looking. I'll make a motion. This is Marcos. Wonderful. Is there a second? Second. And second. Kathy Norman has uh, seconded. And um, as I have shared in uh, previous meetings, one of the wonderful things about our library board and its its ability to really uh, plan for the year is that we put together a budget an annual budget, and then we try our best to adhere to that budget, and we are so fortunate to have Debbie D'Amico really 
define for us how we are doing each month. So all of the things that are currently in this monthly budget are things that we approve you know, on the grand scale <laughs> annually, and now we're just making sure that uh, we are following through on our promises of our expenditures. So, uh, so with that, uh, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, 2.2. Uh, Receive the uh, 2021 budget status report to date. And uh, we also received uh, that information. I'm just pulling it up on my computer at the same time. Um, and uh, in looking over it uh, and the percentages, it, it, um, I did not see anything in particular that we needed to have as of a concern. But at this time, I was just going to turn it over to Sherry Speth to see if there's anything else that we should be uh, uh, aware of. Again, we're just receiving this. We're not voting on it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I looked at the financial statement, and uh, Dev has two concerns, one having to do with the availability of the city funds. Yep. And it makes it look like we're in the red, and she's unhappy with that. And one thing I looked back in my notes from last year, and I don't think this happened last year, did it? Uh, it usually is first of the month is where they go to talk to us, and the budget is usually around the end of the year for the year. Yeah. Is it because they have a new financial um, okay. director? So, so uh, I'm, I'm just jumping in because uh, Debbie is uh, speaking from the Common Council floor, and I know that all of you <laughs> uh, uh, listening in virtually, you are not hearing what she uh, is saying. And so maybe is it possible to go over to, we're going to see if we can turn on the podium, um, and I'm just saying, I'm looking over at our tech person to see. Debbie, you want to try it to see if it looks like the red light is on. So okay. uh, yes. if you wouldn't mind just oh. clarifying again uh, your uh, concerns of why the numbers look um, a little bit different this month versus how it looked a year ago at this time. Correct. As I mentioned last month as well, the levy yep. budget has not been posted from the city finance department as of date. Um, the interim finance director, when I had questioned her on it, had said that the auditors did not want it to be posted until the tax levy is collected in July. Um, my concern is this is just a budget number. It's not the actual number. So we have a meeting with the new finance director, Caitlin Krieger, on Tuesday. And that is one of the questions I'm going to ask her, you know, is because it's a budgeted item, it's not the actual why it cannot be posted and see if we could maybe get an answer. Um, the other uh, item that I did discuss with Cherry is if you look at the donations spent and the donations received, I will not be um, asking the foundation or I will not be cutting the check for them to approve and sign. We decided to do it like on a six month basis. And so I am running the expenses through June 30th and then I will be reconciling them and then having the check cut through the foundation and then it'll be deposited and it'll show more. Um, we have a bulk of the donations um, and all our projects that were done last year that they got behind because of the COVID and not getting materials. A lot of those are now almost complete. We only have very few. So that'll bring the financial statement to look more into the actual as well. Um, other than that, I looked at the percentages and we are right where we should be. The ones with the 100% would be um, like contracts that we have to take out in the beginning of the year. And the city has us post it all in one month versus carrying it over 12 months. So that's the only reason those are showing the 100%. So, all right. so uh, we, we look forward to the report next month to see whether or not the new uh, 
uh, financial calendar of the city, can we make that more carefully align with our financial calendar that, to, so that we have a better understanding right. of what we're viewing when we're looking at our financial reports? Right, and that'll be a June, so you may not see it until August because okay. they'll be posting it in July. But by August, I would hope that everything, you know, on that end would be caught up so we can have a more current financial statement and have a real idea to make decisions. Right. Um, my only follow-up question for you, Debbie, is whether or not, um, you know, anytime that there's new, um, new hires uh, and new people in charge of departments, it takes a little while to try to figure out, you know, what is the new process for how we handle things. But in the meantime, um, you know, when we went through this change a few years ago, it resulted in the library having to pay late fees and late payments on right. various bills. And I just would like for you to clarify whether or not that is happening and again, uh, because yes. when this happened a few years ago, it, 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 it was a good um, moment for me to be able to have a good conversation with um, the city administrator and the mayor. Correct. So. What we did at that point, because we were receiving so many finance charges, is the library board voted to have a weekly pay uh, accounts payable, and that solved our problems of having finance charges. Um, since the change in finance, the interim finance director had decided they were only going to make payments once a month, which for our Amazon account, they are not willing as a big corporation to change payment terms. So like last month, I had close to $300 uh, late fees and finance charges because right now they're buying a lot of items mm -hmm. for the summer reading program. They're buying the games, which they have to pre-order because of the release dates. So on those, we get them all through the year. Um, what I did do is, since the new finance director is in place, I did have a conversation with her and said it just doesn't work for us. And we both tried to work with Amazon. Of course, they would not work with us. So Monday at the department head meeting, she announced that they would be going to a biweekly accounts payable now. And that is gonna be starting in June already. We have to have our invoices in Monday and then the check will be cut in on July 1st. So I'm hoping that will fall within the Amazon and the other companies um, where they will not charge us the interest charges. Right. Well, th thank you for that update, and it is uh, uh, good news that our new city finance director is listening to the concern that we have because we need to be good stewards of our money here, and I don't think any of us or any citizen would like for us to be spending a, a single penny on late fees when we can avoid that. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Thank you for following up and communicating on our behalf, and uh, I will be in touch to see if uh, the, the new plan is truly results in no late fees. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of all things, libraries don't like late fees, <laughs> right. whether we're giving them or, we, or we're having to yes. give them and pay them ourselves. Yeah. So yep. uh, thank And you. Garrett's been very supportive of me to address these with him, and like I said, he and I both, um, Garrett set up a meeting that week can have uh, the new finance director over to the library and we're gonna discuss some of our issues, so. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a very good sign of listening and trying to solve a problem. So yeah. that's, bodes well for the future. So right. thank you, Debbie. Yep, thanks. So. I have one question, Maeve, if yeah. I could. Yep. So are we, the, I mean, I would imagine the same issue is affecting other departments, right? It can't just be us that's trying to figure out where we are with our budget and trying to get money in from the levy. So. We shouldn't be alone on this, I wouldn't right. think. No, it is the other departments. And actually, um, when I mentioned it to Caitlin and we talked about it, she had said she was going to ask the other departments what they thought would be a good solution to, because of course they're sending things out late with a one month you know, AP as well. And then I, when they announced it on Monday, I was like, that's a good solution. So everybody probably mm -hmm. must have been in agreement with that. Okay, good. I just didn't, it didn't seem like it should, it's just our problem. No. Everybody should be concerned about this. And No, it's not hard to start. Yeah. Yeah, so. So, and I'm just pleased with how quickly it's being addressed and, and recognized as an issue, whereas when we had this issue a few years ago, it took us a lot longer to uh, resolve, resolve the issue. So, uh, thank you, Debbie. Any other questions or comments on the status report of our 2021 budget? All right, 
good discussion. Thank you, everyone. Uh, moving on then to uh, 2.3, the Ad Hoc Arts Com uh, and Facilities Committee. Um, this report uh, is actually, I'm just turning it back here, this um, Chris Pamphrey, who is the chair, um, is uh, not able to join us today. And so I plan to put this um, item on the agenda uh, uh, next month. But if there is anyone on the committee that would like to share a little bit of the conversation, they are more than welcome to do so. Um, and uh, sort of for those of you who are on the committee, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, and I'm, I apologize for that. Uh, but um, I do know that uh, from my understanding, there is a, the conversation was very much uh, talking again about where we are as, uh, as a library and the fact that we really don't have a policy uh, regarding um, uh, wonderful works of art that are being donated to our library and that uh, the committee has asked uh, Garrett Erickson, our library director, and his team to uh, put together a rough draft of a policy for the committee to consider and have a conversation about. And, uh, and once that committee deliberates and feels that they have put together a policy that makes sense for Mead Public Library, it then will come to all of us at the full board uh, to be able to um, approve that policy. And then we can use that policy to really address some concerns that have been brought up regarding uh, some, uh, some of our collection that exists currently in, in our building. So, but I don't know if, there, if I've summarized it correctly enough or if there's any detail. Oh, Barbara's giving me the thumbs up, so that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so uh, we will look forward to um, next month, and at that time, I believe, the committee will have already met uh, and discussed uh, the initial round of a rough draft of a policy. We, just one more thing. We also charged uh, Gary to have somebody, uh, I imagine uh, some of the staff do um, uh, inventory of that, those hard objects we do have, so when we do have a policy in place, we can judge whether we want to keep them or find him a new home. <laughs> Wonderful. So for those of you who are listening, that was Sherry Spath, who's uh, also a member of that committee. Uh, so uh, when we are, uh, truly have a policy in place, we will also have a full inventory that will assist us in really looking and analyzing our, our collection. So that is great news and uh, very grateful for our staff to add that to their plate uh, in this next month. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, Sherry. Uh, Next item, uh, 3.1, uh, and I completely forgot um, <laughs> at the beginning of this meeting, please apologize, <laughs> accept my apology. For the first time ever, Garrett Erickson is not here. He has never met, missed a library board meeting in his, all the years that he's been our director. I almost feel like I should have given him a, an attendance award. You know, maybe, I'll, <laughs> maybe we'll do that next month. Um, but uh, he is on uh, vacation with his family and uh, the, uh, so we, we hope he's currently having a wonderful time. Uh, but in, in light of that, uh, Melissa Prentice is, uh, is also here uh, for, at our meeting, and she is going to be taking on his role in trying to really give us an update on some of the topics that are uh, now currently on uh, our agenda. So moving on then to item 3.1, uh, COVID service responses, and I am truly looking forward to maybe 2022, 2023, when that is no longer an item on our agenda, but it is very important that it is currently on our agenda today. So with that, I will turn this over to Melissa Prentice for the COVID service response. Great. Thank you so much, Maeve. And um, first, I'd like to just say welcome to Andre. Uh, great to have you on the board. And uh, I know Mary Lynn and, and Nancy are now gone, but um, thank you to them as well. <laughs> this will at least be on the, on the recording for posterity. Um, so COVID service responses, um, we have opened the third floor teen center as of June 14th. And we are seeing some, some good traffic there, but not too much, which is uh, you know, sort of that happy medium we like to see at this point in, in our COVID reality. So um, we're getting roughly, um, I'd say 50 teens a day, but not all at once. Um, so the ones that are coming in are, are really happy to have us back open. Um, they're excited to see Matt, our uh, teen librarian, they missed him. <laughs> and um, 
things are going well in there. We're doing um, gaming and have the, the computers available and all of that. Um, and then we also are officially back at our regular summer hours as of June 1st. Um, so that means we are open 8.30 till 8 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays, and then 8.30 till 5, um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And um, in terms of the masking, we're definitely seeing a decline in that. Our staff are still wearing masks while they're out at the desk. And we've changed some of the uh, language around it to, to say basically that if you're unvaccinated, you should still wear a mask. Um, but we're definitely seeing that um, masking decline pretty quickly here um, in, the, in the last couple of weeks. Um, and that's, that's about it for COVID updates. Um, do you want me to just keep going, Maeve, or would you like to introduce the, the next topic first? Um, I'll just check to see if any of my colleagues have any questions or comments regarding the COVID service um, responses that we have right now. Does not look like there is, has anyone. I, I just know that we are all just thrilled to really uh, be open for more hours and more areas open. Uh, it just makes uh, 2021 uh, a much more joyful year, just knowing that we're able to provide those areas and those services to our citizens. So thank you to your staff for really uh, taking the steps for making that happen for all of us. We greatly appreciate it. Um, so with that, 3.2, Library Spaces Consultant. If you would like to illuminate that topic for us, Melissa, that would be wonderful. Sure, so we've been discussing some um, building projects, uh, construction projects around the library um, to meet some, some varying needs of the public, so more meeting spaces, possibly a uh, local history room that incorporates the, the Warshaw room as well and really expands that space, um, giving more uh, visibility to the exhibits and special collections that we have. Um, a permanent home for the Mead radio station. Those are just a few of the things we've been discussing. Um, but as we've started kind of working through these projects, um, we feel like it would be really great to get a uh, library specific architect in uh, to give us some feedback and advice so that we can really future plan. Um, you know, if, if COVID kind of taught us anything, it's that um, we need to be flexible and having flexible spaces is so important. Um, I think that we can expect, you know, whether it's another pandemic or some other um, major crisis that will happen again in the next 10 or 20 years and, and to be able to be adaptable and be able to respond to that for the community, I think is really important. So Cheryl and I attended the WAPL conference. That acronym stands for the Wisconsin Association of Public Libraries. Um, in April, I believe it was, and they had a really great keynote from a library architect firm called Enberg Anderson um, that was all about future planning around the pandemic. So we thought it would be great to reach out to them, um, you know, first see how much it costs, um, but, but possibly have someone come in and do a, just an overall assessment of the library space and uh, give us some, some feedback on where we should go with things. So we're not just kind of guessing at that. So any questions about that? Uh, Kathy Norman. Yeah, so, I mean, putting aside, we don't know how much the architect would cost or how much a remodel would cost. Is this something that you're thinking about putting in the capital improvement list? Or is this something you might want to turn to the Mead Library Foundation to try to get funding to accomplish? That's a great question. and. Um, I believe that Garrett's plan is to go to the foundation, at least for the cost of the architect. Um, once we start planning out the actual construction projects, that might be something we can look at capital improvement for. But okay, I mean, I I know some of you have heard me beat on this drum before, but I'm really, really um, interested in getting the Warshaw Room, the Holocaust material collection, to be put on better prominent display. Um, because it's sort of hidden and we have such a treasure trove of, of materials and it could be such a great educational opportunity. Um, I sent along to Garrett and Maeve a couple weeks ago, I'd seen a um, big article to talk about how, 
Holocaust education now is more important than ever as you know anti-Semitic incidents arise. And I, I immediately thought we've got such great materials for schools to come in and access, but it's hidden. Um, so I'd really like to get this done. And then I like the idea of incorporating it into a larger remodel because we have a lot of historical materials generally. Um, so I, I hope we can do it. And I, I think the foundation would probably be very willing to help. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. And um, I'm excited about it too. I think it'll be really great to get some outside feedback on our, our space overall. And I agree that even if um, the the local history room itself takes a little more time for that build out. I think that we should, in the meantime, really think about ways to highlight that Warsaw collection. Um, we talked about it even briefly in the um, arts committee as well. Just thinking about what what are we giving space to in the library? What what um, art collections and and other types of collections are we highlighting and, and exhibiting publicly, and what are we hiding um, and and rethinking those priorities, so. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Any other question or comments? Um, I would just like to share a historical uh, connection in that um, when I first joined the library board, um, this is before we had a teen area that was on two floors, and uh, it was really the, um, the guidance and the leadership from our library director at the time, Sharon Winkle, and her staff, who felt that they did not know enough about how to create a teen area that was truly welcoming for teens. And so we ended up hiring a consultant uh, a, a, that was specified, really focused on teens in libraries. And so we have a precedent at our library really doing the research and hiring the experts to really advise us on how best to make our uh, building truly accessible for all. Um, and at the time, uh, we actually, at the library board, we had funds that were gifted to the library to be able to use for youth. And it used to be the library board that was in charge of those funds. And as all of you are aware, those funds now have been given to the foundation for the foundation to help manage so that we have more opportunities to utilize those monies in ways that befit the library. So I, I, I think this is a, a, a great uh, project uh, for us to really focus on in this year of 2021. And the only uh, other historical piece that I wanted to share is that I remember um, when the Washaw Room was um, developed and created. And interestingly enough, it's actually in its second rendition of it. Uh, it it used to even be more hidden <laughs> within the library. Mm -hmm. And at the time that it was created, um, several of the wonderful families that donated some of their incredible family treasures and their stories with us, uh, they were concerned about it being out on the floor. They wanted it to be uh, protected. And so I think we are now at a point in time that we can create a way for it to be fully uh, visible, yet at the same time can be protected. And I think we can accomplish that with some really good guidance from uh, a consultant that can come in once they hear what our true wishes are for just not only that collection, but for all of our collections. So uh, uh, thank you for uh, recognizing that this is an issue and that you uh, 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 first heard of the firm at a conference. If that's not another perfect reason why we should be making sure that our library staff and professionals get an opportunity to go to conferences, because then they can come back with these great ideas and great connections. So uh, thank you. Um, next up, um, unless someone else has anything else they'd like to say. Uh, ne next up is uh, a really uh, fun topic for some of you. Um, <laughs> fun for me, uh, the future meeting logistics. I know that sounds really far out, like I'm thinking of Star Trek and we're gonna beam ourselves up to like new you know, spaces, but what it really means is, is really thinking about our library board meeting times and it's been really challenging this year, adding this whole virtual component but because it's been virtual, we've been able to maybe have it at an earlier time, three o'clock. But in really thinking about our community and our citizens and perhaps it could be their interest in being able to come to a meeting and be able to share public comments, um, it has been 
talked about in previous years per to perhaps moving our meeting to five o'clock. And then, you know, we could still continue to have the virtual option because we know some of you are working or it might be that you're you know, not able to get from one place to the other. Uh, but I wanted to have a conversation about moving our meeting time from three o'clock to five o'clock uh, so that our citizens have a, uh, a little bit more easier time to, cons to potentially participate in our um, meetings that we have at, um, hopefully in the future, at Mead Public Library. So any thoughts about moving our time from three to five or perhaps you have a different time, uh, but that's why I have it on the agenda because it's usually right around this time is when we set our meeting schedule for the whole <laughs> year, which is the next item, 3.4. But I wanted to talk about the time. Uh, any thoughts from those of you uh, if there's a particular time that is not uh, reasonable or uh, helpful? No, I think Maeve, if you bring cookies, um, I, then we can, <laughs> we can make it to dinner. <laughs> I promise once we're finally in person, I feel bad about yep. bringing cookies to Common Council because I feel like there's a no yeah. food rule in here. But <laughs> but I will always bring cookies when we're back in our regular room. <laughs> well, that's what I thought you meant by this agenda item. Are we are we talking about going back in person sometime soon? Apparently, the Common Council is going to be signing um, the new policy. Uh, there was a policy that said that all meetings uh, this past year because of COVID and other things needed to be in common council room. Uh, and now the new policy is allowing us to have an option of going back to Mead Public Library, but there are steps that we need to follow to ensure that our public can still per perhaps have an opportunity to view the meeting if they are not in person. Uh, we are fortunate at the library because we have the technology that we can uh, record and share this video of our meetings for the public to be able to access it at any time. So, so are, are any concerns about uh, moving it to five? Otherwise, that that would be my inclination. But I welcome any other in, input. So this would be to help people that are working get there, as well as our school board or our Sheboygan School District representative, right? Correct, um, and, okay. and, and we will have a, um, uh, Chris Camp is still our uh, school district liaison, but she, mm -hmm. um, uh, but when she steps down, it could be from a, 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 another employee, and many times it's very challenging for, <laughs> for that person to get to our meetings until after four anyway. So I think the five o'clock time would work well for that uh, future liaison appointment. So, okay. all right, well, I just want to have the discussion. So now we can move to 3.4 and you can take a look in your board docs. It's sort of, uh, there's not really any um, surprises uh, as far as the meeting times. The only thing that I would say is that there would be a change to the bottom of the document stating that the meetings are, will be held, are held at uh, 5 p.m. on the fourth Thursday of every uh, of each month except where noted and it says in the council chambers um, or Mead Public Library or virtually. So I'm adding in <laughs> Mead Public Library as a possibility because I think that is what will happen uh, later this uh, year. Maeve, yes. is the finance committee should be like a half hour before or? Uh, the, the, the finance uh, committee schedule and that's something that's usually just um, uh, it's sort of like pro forma that it's really will determine the finance committee members will determine when their meetings will be each month. So they don't necessarily have to be right before. It could be whenever right. the finance it, chair, right. Okay, so, it's just that you have it at the same time and I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not too sure. I, I, I noticed that too. So I think at this time, the, the schedule of meetings that we are going to approve, because it looked like there were two documents, uh, this is just for our regular board meeting and our finance meetings will be determined as needed by the chair and uh, De Debbie D'Amico. 
So, so at this time, I am looking for a motion uh, to adopt the schedule of just the Library Board of Trustee meetings for 2021-22, with the correction at the bottom stating that the meetings will be held at 5 p.m. on the fourth Thursday of each mo month, except where noted, uh, in the council chambers, or Mead mid Public Library, or virtually. That way we're covered. <laughs> Would someone like to Come make on. that motion? Thank you, Kathy. Is yes. there a second? Second. Uh, Andre uh, Walton has seconded. And uh, Andre, I know it's very strange, but in this council chamber, you have to push the button until your microphone turns red. Oh, okay. Even though an elementary teacher Ooh. wants green to be go for speaking, that's just how it is in this building. So if you mm -hmm. press that and let go, eventually it turns oh, red. It All right. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> All right, so it's been moved and seconded. Are there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, op any opposed? Motion carries. All right, well, uh, now I'm actually gonna turn back again to Melissa Prentice, who will be giving us the director's report on behalf of uh, Library Director Garrett Erickson. Uh, and 4.1, and usually, as you're well aware, Melissa Prentice usually starts this report anyways, because it's always an update on services and programming. Great, thank you, Maeve. Um, so a few updates on programs that we just had. Uh, Maker Fair was just this Saturday. And I was told today, this seems huge, but we had 2,500 participants between the virtual programs and the in-person fair. Um, so that's the highest attendance we've ever had. The last Maker Fair, full Maker Fair, that was in person in 2019, we had 1,600. Um, but this, I guess with the virtual programming, that kind of allowed more people to participate. We even had um, one of the makers, a guy who designs robots, uh, joined us virtually from Japan. It was two in the morning his time, um, but that was very popular. So it's very exciting and I think bodes well for the future of the fair. Um, we also had uh, the library out um, in an outreach capacity at the Juneteenth celebration on Saturday as well. And that was hugely successful. We gave away um, 60 books. We made 200 buttons with kids. Um, and there was a lot of bubbles and a very hungry caterpillar photo booth was also super popular. The staff that participated had a great time and said we had tons of traffic to the library booth. Um, lots of folks, um, without library cards, interested in getting library cards. So it was a very successful uh, outreach event. And then this week we hosted our first uh, stuffed animal sleepaway camp at the library. We had 50 stuffed animals participate and it was hugely successful. Um, we've gotten all kinds of feedback on the program. Like I got a phone call today and um, you know, just with a little grain of salt, I often take, um, I don't often take happy phone calls. <laughs> Usually when a call gets transferred to me and oh, a patron wants to talk to you, it's <laughs> I'm usually um, up for a bit of a challenge, but this was someone who was just so happy about the stuffed animal sleepover and wanted to, to share how thrilled they were and, and wanted to share that with the staff. So it clearly had a huge impact. Um, you can see the very, fun pictures on our Facebook site. Uh, we also hosted a professional headshots workshop at the library yesterday. Um, that was also quite successful. We had 30 people sign up for that, um, which I think just speaks to where folks are at right now with looking for work and, and wanting to um, spruce up their professional profiles. So we might actually do that again in September since there is a demand for it. Um, and that's, I did also want to give you guys an update on the uh, City Library Collective, the grant that they're pursuing um, through DPI for uh, the ARPA funds. Um, we do have a draft uh, grant statement done. We will be submitting that, I believe it's due uh, the first week in July. And I just wanted to uh, read to you the, the basic statement so you guys have a, an, an overview of the um, the scope of the grant. So 
as a coalition, the City Library Collective aims to build resiliency through workforce development, social emotional well being, and educational support. Each library will implement projects under this umbrella that address the particular needs of their communities, but which may be adaptable and replicable in other communities. And these groups will act as supports for each other while incubating replicable library centric strategies in support of each of those areas. So more on that as it develops, but um, it's an exciting project. And any questions? Just looking around. Um, I just have to say, Melissa, that I feel like the summary of the report, you touched upon all my favorite things about Mead Public Library. I mean, it's just, um, and I have to say that I, in particular, love the photos of the stuffed animal sleepover the animals enjoying s'mores in the um, in the in the library was just precious. So uh, that engagement with our youth in just unique, fun ways, and and seeing all the stuffed animals finding their favorite book to read, it was, it's just brilliant. So I don't know who among your staff came up with this idea, but um, it just really um, just made you smile. And I'm so delighted that someone kind of took the time to call you and just share because the photos alone just really just made me smile with, you know, youth and literacy and then librarians focusing on making literature experiences uh, full of joy for children. So um, it was the best of the best. And I am just in shock over the 2,500 people for the, the Maker Fair. And to do that on the same day, that you also had a very well uh, involved uh, booth at the Juneteenth celebration. Um, just, you know, uh, just kudos to you and your staff doing two really important things on the same day in Sheboygan. Um, most people would choose not to do that and say, no, we don't have enough time, but you recognize the outreach component of that festival and how important it was for me to be there and prior prioritizing that is just wonderful. So. Um, Thank you for this uh, update. It just makes me want this update to happen at the beginning of the meeting too. It's like I want it at the beginning and at the end. So lots of good stuff, so thank you. Can, can I add one little program yep. that none of you mentioned? I, I learned about this from Maeve actually. I don't know how I missed it on the website or Facebook, but Maeve mentioned at a book club meeting that the library offers to help you find um, some recommendations based on your reading history or you, there's a form you can go to on the Mead website, fill out like some of your favorite books, your favorite authors, and then submit it, and they come back to you with recommendations. And so I did that after Mead brought it to my attention, and they came back with five recommendations, and I picked them all up, and one of them has just completely grabbed me. I, and I never would have heard that title if it hadn't been for that. So I think that's kind of a cool service, you know, personalized recommendations from your local librarian based on your interests. Oh, that's wonderful, Kathy. And, and maybe there could be like a little poster in the stacks when you're clueless trying to find something that mm -hmm. we could remind people that librarians are ready to share their incredible vast knowledge with us of what to, what to read next. Which reminds mm -hmm. me, uh, I will also say that each and every one of you can sign up for the summer book uh, book challenge. It's for adults too and uh, you know, um, uh, it's very easy to sign up. I believe Melissa can even tell us that you can sign up online, but it's not just for children anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that we, every year we keep increasing the number of children, teens, and adults that participate. And this is a great year to do it if you haven't had the opportunity. And who knows, maybe you could have them pick the five books that you should read. And so it's a win-win. <laughs> great. Um, all right, uh, then, up next, uh, 4.2 update from support services. So Cheryl was not able to join us for the meeting today, but she does not have any updates to share. Um, and thank you, Kathy, for that feedback on the on the next five books. That's something we pushed pretty hard during during the pandemic, and it's been really successful. Great. All right. So we will get uh, update on support services next month. Um, and I'm assuming that is the same for update on building projects, other than I think I shared with everyone that the, there's a the um, big uh, banner uh, in front of the generator 
uh, really tries to advertise our uh, summer reading program, and that's just, that's going to be such a great location to have big banners every month of whatever great things that are happening in the library. So, um, I uh, I'm not too sure if there's anything else as far as our building projects, but uh, um, just one small thing, Maeve. Um, yeah. We are going to uh, we put a hold on a, a lot of the building projects until we're able to bring that architect in, but. One small project that um, we are going to proceed with is adding that second conference room on the second floor. Um, we have a whole section of unused space uh, that's part of the staff work area um, that I believe all it requires is a, is a bit of electrical work and some drywall and it can be um, a second public conference room, a little bit larger than uh, the current one, but very similar in, in shape and size. Um, so I don't have a, a date on when that project is due to start, but um, that's, I suppose that is a building project update, so. Yep, and that's, that's wonderful. You probably need to, uh, and Debbie is gonna come over to the podium. Um, and for those of you who are not as aware, our library um, public spaces for meeting rooms to be reserved by the public are so popular. So the more that we can re-envision how we use our building to make more areas available for the public to use for their different uh, meetings or clubs, uh, the better. So, and Debbie, you wanted to add something. Yes, um, we actually replaced 100 chairs for the huh? meeting rooms um, and we sold all the other chairs. So, um, yes, um, in matter of fact, Carol Maureen, um, has a military school and they were excited to buy the chairs. Oh, wonderful. Is so, that through the Friends of uh, Mead Public Library? Were nope, they, that no. was through, Sydney did a lot of work and she went to Facebook Market and she sold more than the Friends sold. She did a wonderful job. I mean, she should really be recognized for the work she did on selling the assets. Um, we are to the point now where we just need the dumpster and then <laughs> toss, um, you know, the things that could not be sold or were too bad to sell. And also then the page room is almost got the air conditioning in. There's just one small electrical item and then the page room will now have their own air conditioning. So. Wonderful. So uh, th thank you for that update and uh, I'm glad that we are finally getting air conditioning to, uh, for some of our library workers that work so hard on behalf that they should have a place where they're able to recover a little bit before they go back on the floor to work with our um, uh, resources. Um, and and th I'm gonna echo what uh, Debbie just said about Sydney. I had no idea that you are like the chair <laughs> expert. And so thank you for working so hard and, and, and being in fact very green about the chairs that you actually found uh, someone who could use them in a second life. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, your efforts in, in uh, helping us uh, uh, raise a little bit of money to help offset the cost of some of the new chairs. So thank you. Um, with that, uh, under 4.4 monthly statistics, um, as, as you're well aware with COVID, these statistics are really kind of interesting. Um, and. Uh, uh, as, as we were sort of teasing, um, I think our library director Garrett last time is that he will really miss the days in which he can say he's had a you know 405 percent improvement from one year to the next. Uh, but just seeing these numbers uh, of, of you know resources being utilized more and more people uh, uh, coming into the library, et cetera, um, is, is just wonderful to see. Uh, Melissa, is there anything in particular that you wanted us to pay attention to on the um, uh, statistics that are shared for this past month? Uh, nothing in particular unless there's any questions. All right. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the last part of our agenda is this liaison reports, and I'm not too sure if our newest, uh, one of our new library board trustees, Barbara Alvarez, if she's had an opportunity to uh, attend a Monarch Library System uh, board meeting, because I am unaware of what their meeting schedule is. So, but just so you know, Barbara, this is always listed at the end of the agenda. So I'm not too sure if you have anything to report at this time. Thanks, Maeve. I don't have anything to report, except that I did meet with Nancy, who kind of helped me learn about the ropes 
for attending future meetings, but I haven't actually been invited or given an agenda yet for an upcoming Monarch meeting. So I, I don't have anything else to report. Okay. Uh, th thank you so much. And for those of you who weren't aware, um, Nancy Manchin had been our representative on the Monarch Library Board system for, I want to say, Kathy, what, two years, three years? I, it all begins to blur together of how long Nancy was on, because I know Kathy was our representative prior to uh, Nancy. Uh, but And then, yeah, and then Henry Meller before, or, or uh, Henry, what's Henry's name? No, who, was, who was our rep Nelson. for many? Henry Nelson. No. Yeah. Henry Nelson did it for years and years. Then I did it for a couple of years, and I think, yeah, Nancy's been doing it for two or three. And it's important because we're the main resource library, so we need to make sure that, you know, we have a presence. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely the biggest library in the system, even though there's a, a percentage. I mean, I'm sure, Barbara, you got a little bit of the history from Nancy, but you know, there's been a complicated formula about how decisions get made and so forth, but we are the resource library. Great. Thank you, Kathy. And then uh, the last liaison report that I have, oh, not last, because there's two pages, sorry, uh, the Mead Library Foundation. And I will turn this over to Kathy Norman. Yeah, there's not really too much to report. I think the last time we met as a library board, we already kind of told you that we're sort of in a holding pattern about many of the events that we hold. Um, so many of them are in the fall and they're all up in the air. We're waiting to see how things are, like a, you know, different fundraiser or a Renaissance Gala. Um, we're talking about possibly trying to make our giving um, a little bit less confusing. Right now when somebody wants to make a gift to Mead Library, there's a confusion. Are they giving it to the library? Are they giving it to the foundation? Are they giving it to the Renaissance Society? So we're in the process of trying to make it more seamless and less confusing. It should, if somebody wants to donate to the library, it should be very straightforward and easy. Um, and part of that is updating the website, the foundation website, and figuring out how it links to the library board, the, the Mead Library website. Um, so that's an ongoing project. Um, the money that's been bequeathed and gifted to the foundation is doing very well in this investment market, which is great because that means there's more funds available to fund many of the projects that the library wants to do that can't be covered by the allocation we get from the city. Um, and so I'm particularly excited about this historical room remodel. Hopefully that's something the foundation can fund in the future. Great. That's it. Thank you, Thank you Kathy. Uh, any questions or comments for Kathy? All right, uh, then moving on to 5.3, Friends of Mead. And Sydney is always our wonderful liaison. Yeah, so um, the Friends actually have not met this month. They had um, a very, very light agenda, so they decided to just table it until next month. So I have no report this month. You can tell summer is really here. This is typical mm -hmm. and, and wonderful for all of us. So uh, thank you, Sydney. Um, we do have some upcoming meetings. Uh, on, there will be an ad hoc equity uh, committee meeting on June 30th at 2 p.m. If you are not on that uh, committee, you are, as always, welcome to attend all of our committee meetings. Uh, it is also, as a quick reminder, good to let the chair know to make sure that we don't have a walking forum of our full board. If we do end up having a walking forum, we just need to make sure that our um, agenda is posted in a different way with a certain special legal disclaimer. Uh, so um, that is coming up on June 30th, and then our next uh, Library Board of Trustee meeting will be uh, July 22nd. And sometime between now and then, uh, there may be a possibility of a Finance Committee meeting, but that will be under the uh, decision of the Finance Chair and Debbie Am uh, D'Amico whether or not uh, we need to have a meeting in July or, or uh, later in the month, depending on the financial reports and when they come through from the city. So with all of that, uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Okay, Kathy Norman has made the motion. Would someone like to second? I seconded, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry has seconded. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries. Thank you all for joining us uh, today and I uh, look forward to seeing you um, next month on the 22nd at 5 p.m. Uh, and I will make sure you are told well in advance whether or not we're meeting here, <laughs> Common Council, or Mead Public Library. Either way, we will continue to have this virtual option just while we are still trying to uh, handle this pandemic as safely as we can. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of the week, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.